Hey everyone, Brian from Sui Generis Brewing here. It is an incredibly hot September 3rd, 2023, and it's time for another update on the 50 meter beer project. Now I must apologize, it's been over a month since the last update, but that said, very little has actually happened in that time. Uh, I took some time off to head up north, spent some time fishing and free diving and doing other stuff. Uh, and so during that time, the barley I harvested has just been sitting in some paper bags. The yeast that I collected have been sitting in the fridge on plates, uh, which is usually enough to sort of shut them down. And as you can see behind me, the hops have been growing. But uh, I haven't really done much for the project until today, and so I thought today would also be a good time to do a quick update. So why don't we start at the beginning with the barley. Uh, the barley harvest is complete. I have taken care of all the chaff, the seed's been cleaned, and it's now just sitting waiting to come through dormancy. I have almost three kilograms, which would be enough for a half batch of beer. But that said, I'm pretty sure I wanna grow some more barley next year. And what I think I'm gonna do is just grow the bear, which is that Viking age barley. And, and my rationale behind that is the other barley I grew, Harrington, is essentially a modern malting strain. And so because of that, if I do things right, I'm gonna end up with what I just buy at the homebrew store. So what's really the point of that? I don't really, you know, in hindsight, I, I kind of wish I hadn't done that. Um, so I'm going to actually hold on to most of that bear for planting next year. So I don't actually have as much as I had hoped. So I am going to be brewing a half batch when it comes to it. I may have to supplement a little bit with some feed barley. And so what I'm going to do with the bear is I'm going to take a small portion of it and malt it and toast it to try and draw out a little bit more of its unique grain flavor uh, and use it more as a specialty malt than as a base malt. The hops you can see behind me have come along really well. Uh, they are a little bit late this year. We had a cool August which slowed everything down, but they're starting to finally mature. The lupulin is still developing. They're not quite ready for harvest, but I think probably within a week or maybe two, it'll be time to start picking. So the big story in today's video is actually the yeast. Uh, so the yeast, I, I plated out yeast for multiple samples, but I only really got colonies from two of those. Uh, the third source that I plated out just grew these weird looking mold colonies that I'm showing on the screen at the moment. But the other two yeast sources, which were the herbs and the barley, actually gave me some good colonies that grew up quite nicely. Now, those grew up right before I went away on holiday, so what I did is I wrapped those petri dishes in vinyl tape and placed them in the fridge. That's normally enough to stop their growth and allow me to store them for a month or two before I come back to them. Now when we look more closely at these plates, you'll see on the herb plate that these look just like normal everyday yeast colonies. They stayed basically the size that they were when I pl uh, put the plates into the fridge. Nothing here has really changed. But the yeast from the barley is a little bit more interesting. Now first you'll notice that we did get two mold colonies here. That's not unexpected. It's hard to get rid of that uh, in a straight wild ferment. But you'll also notice that these colonies are quite big and they were not like that when I put them in the fridge. They were actually normal size, just like on that herb plate. And so that's pretty exciting because it suggests that these are somewhat cold tolerant yeast that I got off of those barley plants. And from a brewing perspective, that's somewhat interesting because that may mean that I can ferment them cooler and maybe help to keep some of those strong yeast esters that are common in wild strains a little more in check than I might otherwise be able to do. Of course, I have no guarantee any of these yeasts that I've collected are any good at all, so the next step is to run some fermentation trials, and that's what I'm actually doing today, uh, and that's what sort of nucleated this video. So my goal today is to transfer several colonies from each plate into actual beer wort. And what I'm doing just down here at the base of the stairs is I am brewing a sort of classic German style Pilsner. But what I've done is I've added about an extra liter of volume to that. And at the end of the boil, I'll now be able to use that extra volume to fill up some sterilized glass tubes with this wort. And I can then use a bacteriological loop and the technique shown in some of my earlier videos to transfer the colonies from the plate and into those tubes of wort. These will then ferment and will serve two purposes. The first purpose is I will now have a liquid culture of these different yeasts. But secondly, there's enough volume in these tubes to allow me to do some very basic trials with them. There's actually enough volume in these tubes that I can take a little bit out and use a refractometer to get a gravity reading. Uh, you do have to correct for the fermented gravity, but that's a simple calculation. I can also uh, check the pH uh, with a pH strip, and I can also 
test the aroma by smelling the tube, and I can even take a small volume of that out to taste. So it really lets me do sort of a, a full workup on those yeasts in a pretty minimal volume, with the added advantage that that yeast in the bottom of the tube is now the yeast to start up a larger starter if I decide to go forward with one of those yeasts. But the other advantage of this approach is that I will have the actual beer, which is fermented with W3470, as a comparator. And so I'll be able to compare the aroma and the flavor and the attenuation and all those other factors I can measure in those little tubes to the actual beer brewed with the proper yeast. And so that'll let me tease out a little bit better what the flavor and aroma characters are from the yeast I've used relative to the other ingredients that are present in that beer. So that's my goal for today. At the end of today, I should have a, a fermenter full of beer plus some tubes of some uh, yeast samples, uh, which I'll be able to compare in about a month. In between now and then, I'm hopefully going to be harvesting these hops. Might throw in a fresh hop ale there since it looks like I've got a couple kilos of hops sitting behind me here. And uh, that's it for now. So thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you next video.